Hello. I'm standing in a cellar that measures roughly 16 feet by 20 feet. Uh, we believe it is to a, to a structure that dates to the uh, 1660s. We think that the building itself was uh, likely timber frame. Some evidence, evidence for the actual timber frame uh, can be seen here in the destruction rubble. We know this building burned. We've been finding uh, solid evidence of that all along the uh, floor of the cellar. We also have quite a bit of plaster. You can see all of the white, which is mostly concentrated along the edges here of the cellar, um, which is logical because the walls above would have been uh, uh, plastered and as this building burned, the plaster fell along the walls. That's why we don't have plaster out in the middle. It's just along, concentrated to the sides. We're finding some of the objects that would have been in this house uh, prior to the fire, or actually part, also maybe part of the house, like door hardware, window, window hardware. Um, you can see over by uh, Dan, if you don't mind uh, pointing out some of the some of the iron objects there on the floor. Uh, we got a large iron spike there and um, several other to be identified objects. One, one looks like that one there looks like a, uh, a hinge of sorts. And then there's another one over there that from this distance at least looks like a pair, possibly a pair of shears. Um, you can see right here in front of me, the neck to a, a, a German stoneware Bellarmine jug. And I think I've seen some of the other pieces to that jug as we've been excavating in here, an indicator that that jug may well have been in the building at the time of, of the fire. We actually have tobacco pipe stem fragments and tobacco pipe bowl fragments spread around between the cracks of the, in the floor. And these are likely being smoked down here in the, in the, on the, in the cellar. And when they broke, they just uh, got kicked in between the cracks and so these probably were lost here during the use of the, um, of the cellar. We have a glass case bottle right here on the floor. Looks like broken in place. You can see the neck here and uh, a couple dozen pieces of the bottle sp uh, spread out throughout here. Um, that's interesting that that may well have been on the floor at the time of the fire. It's interesting to note though we have very few artifacts on the floor of the cellar, or you see probably less than 10 objects down here. It looks uh, for all the world like this, uh, prior to the fire, uh, someone went through this house and removed um, the, uh, the objects. So that would say it wasn't, you know, wasn't a catastrophic fire where they didn't have any time to, to prepare. What we know from our work along the edges of the cellar is that as the colonists robbed out the brick foundation and took these bricks elsewhere, they then left a freestanding wall of the clay fill that was the builder's trench fill. So that would have been freestanding right in this area where my hands are. Um, so with time, with this open exposed pit, the uh, elements, the rain and erosion took that freestanding builder's trench and, and made it collapse and silt into the cellar. So all along the edges of the cellar, we found the collapsed builder's trench. And since I'm over here, I can show you in our, uh, in our wall here where we've left some of the fill standing. You can see that layer right through here with all of the clay. That's the, con that's the collapsed builder's trench silting into the, into the cellar. Um, it was in that layer that we found a, uh, 50, uh, a 1656 uh, French coin. Okay, we're down in um, a mid-17th century cellar here at Jamestown, and um, what we've uncovered on the floor is several spots where barrels um, were resting down here in the one corner um, of this side of the cellar in the southwest corner. Um, and um, the first barrel we came upon was right in this area, and the only way you can really see them was uh, to look for pieces of staves coming up from the barrel. This is the actual bottom. And then it looks like um, you can kind of see the, the beveled edge from the actual uh, bottom of the barrel. And then this may be part of the top of the barrel as it collapses in after it burns. Um, in this area, we've got a small bucket or a small barrel in this section. Like I said, you can only really tell that it's a barrel by the staves that come up 
uh, in some of the areas and start to make that circular uh, pattern with the wood on the floor. Um, we've noticed that we haven't found any iron pieces for uh, barrel hoops. Um, instead, we had wivels, which are wooden barrel hoops around here. And the best example of that is actually a small one here in the corner, right up in the edge. You can see this wooden band would have been the actual hoop um, for that actual barrel. Um, let's see, the other one right here, it looks like the very center of the barrel is right here for a huge, huge, good-sized barrel. And then the upper part has kind of collapsed around the outside um, as parts of the building came down upon it. Uh, and the very best example we found of any of the barrels uh, was this huge one over in the corner. And you can see we've almost got two inches of the stave on one side here. But this is the best example that we have of one of the burials down here on the floor when this building uh, burns down. And I think we have five barrels altogether.